but the cool thing was I jumped off my horse and on the back of the buffalo. Oh, yeah. You tackled it, did you? No. South, you ever been to South Dakota? No, not yet. It's a, unbelievable. I, I fit in perfectly. Cowboy boots, rednecks. Saturday, there's all kinds of college football on, and every station they had on at a bar was a rodeo. Next now, next year, Marty's joining the uh, the bull riding competition at the fair. Yes, I am. He could be the rodeo clown. <laughs> That's dangerous. Those you gotta guys, save, you those gotta guys save are their crazy. They are nuts. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Northern Illinois Wrestling Podcast. Marty, Dan, how you guys doing this morning? Awesome. Doing well. Great. Great to see you guys. Um, we uh, we got to catch up a little bit, Marty and I, um, last week. We were talking about some ideas of how to continue to grow wrestling. But, um, you know, I'm setting up some, some more podcasts with some local coaches. Today I might have um, uh, Oregon coach join us um, or I'll – talk to him later after we get done but um dan did you get a chance to listen to uh to our combo no uh bits and pieces i haven't been able to listen to the whole thing yet that's all good well chime in a little bit uh you know how do you think um we've been doing on here and then what do you think uh um we can look forward to if anything about this just the sports um growth in general well, I think Marty says it all the time, and we talk about on here anything we can do, anything to promote the sports, awesome on any platform. And now everything seems to be digital that these kids see. They don't take their phones out of their hand, their faces in their computer. So that's probably the best way to reach them. Uh, it, trying to grow the sport, man, that's been a conversation for the ages lately. You know, uh, I think it's a part of the combination of maybe today's youth and uh, the toughness of the sport. You know, kids, kids don't like things that are tough. Look, there's just an article in the paper about the drop off in football numbers and people can talk Well, you know, concussions and people are afraid of, but football tough, And we all know how tough wrestling is. So I think it's, you got to find the right kids that are willing to put in that time, the grind, you know, embrace the grind. And a lot of kids, they get to the grind and they go the other way. They don't want to grind it out every day in the practice room. So to promote it, I you just got you got to be a car salesman. You just got to go. You got to talk to kids. You got to make it seem like it's the greatest thing in the world. You know, get them there, get them in the room, make it exciting somehow. <laughs> you know? I love how you said make them. <clears throat> think it's the greatest thing in the world yeah i <laughs> well, mean i joke i'm joking because obviously it is to me one of the the positive yeah uh, things in my life yeah it isn't the most you know enjoyable I, you thing. know you know uh i love the sport i mean we all do uh you got to find i mean if you grab i don't know 10 kids maybe three of them will fall in love with it you know those other seven may may stick with it but you know very few actually truly fall in love with the sport. And those that do, they're set for success the rest of their life, you know, from what they learn in wrestling. So, um, yeah, I, I, you just got to promote, promote. You got to get if yeah. you're in your building. You got to be, like Marty said, you got to go to the cafeteria. You got to go to practices. You got to find kids walking the hall, no matter how big or small. You know, yeah. small guys are looking for something to do in high school, so you grab them. Get in the mat. Be our, be our six pounder. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm optimistic. I think um, I, I said I've said this the last couple of years, but I think um, the sport is is definitely on a um, a boundary line of like um, just more much more adoption. Uh, just generally speaking, I do think that we do need to have like a different conversation about what you said, the grind versus just getting people introduced. I think, um, you know, just personally, I know that most people weren't on the grind. Um, and, uh, so I just think we could, uh, figure out a, a different process of getting people slowly engaged in the sport as opposed to, uh, requiring the grind. 
But uh, yeah, Marty, Marty, I wanted to ask you. You said you talked to uh, Brad Lynn. We chatted a little bit uh, last week. So did you get a chance to catch up with Brad? Was he listening to the podcast? Oh yeah, he was listening to the podcast, and he's all in about it. I mean, you want to talk about a grind? <clears throat> that guy. I mean, he he's the one that made the grind at Hanamiga. He's the first pers- first person <clears throat> to. Be in the wrestling room on his own, working out on his own. I mean, he's just he was he's the epitome of Hananiga wrestling. And he kind of wants he wants to come on a podcast and talk, and he will be very good because he's not only really good and really smart about wrestling, but he's also entertaining. Well, so, great. We'll we'll have to plan uh, that out for the next couple of weeks and see if we can get him on. Yeah, um, send you his he, number and stuff. Yeah, I got it. I think I have his contact. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh um, yeah, he'd be great. Unbelievable. Uh, you guys have anything else on top of mind uh, in in the world of wrestling and locally? Did you guys watch the trials? Talk about them? Yeah, I watched them. Yeah. Did you? Uh, I know we we touched the last time I was on. You know about the uh, senior level and the support guys get, and I thought Burroughs' uh, interview afterwards kind of touched a little bit about that you know he was wrestling at penn state penn state guys and how the crowd was not much for him and i don't think it was the whole crowd but i think there was a few select and uh he talked about how that you know penn state tried to break him kill him and he wouldn't allow it so i think it goes to uh kind of i said you know when you're you support a certain college, you you learn to love your guys and you learn not to like the other guys. And But then when they go to compete for us in the U.S., it's sometimes it's hard to differentiate. You know what I was amazed at, too, about it is it looked like they wrestled in a junior high. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, the facility was just horrific. I'm going, what? This is our best wrestlers in our country and they're wrestling in a, yeah. in a conference room? <laughs> a convention well, center. Yeah. I think the challenge with that stuff is always like, you know, you know, I mean, have you ever looked into what the cost is for certain arenas and and venues? And then like knowing that whether or not people are going to go, you know, I was just thinking about the fact that like, it's like every other month they're having some type of a uh, qualifier. Um, It seems like there might be almost like too much um qualifying events and stuff like the, it's just uh it's i don't know what's the most important event you know world team trials um did david taylor need to qualify for the world team seeing how he was you know the second in in uh, the ladder um i guess that's my I, I would be more curious as to what the criteria well, like is it really that that important for for everybody to go run a tournament again um especially seeing how David Taylor is an Olympic champion, world champion, and uh, he was second in the ladder. I mean, <laughs> you know, you could have a tournament that has a challenge tournament that then you could have, you know, that like final X type event that you said, all right, this guy gets a competition against David Taylor to see who's going to go. Um, that would make more sense to me because then it would be a production as opposed to, you know, you know, an entry tournament with 200 athletes and, see who qualifies so the kind of confusing thing was me was this was just the weight classes that don't compete at the olympics yeah yeah so at the worlds it's just these weight classes the olympic weights don't wrestle correct no they wrestle no they wrestle it's the additional weight class okay so the guys who were olympians are automatic on the world team this year i would assume so yes Okay. Right. You know what? You know what? Uh, there was, I think it was Jordan Burroughs, the guy that interviewed us. It might have been during the Olympics. And he talked about how the United States is so fair at making people qualify. So many countries just pick the kid and say, hey, yeah. I'm just wrestling. This guy's wrestling. He loves it because you have to wrestle through a gauntlet to get to it. You know, and he, he enjoys that. And I mean, I think it's, I, I think. Just because you're second on the ladder doesn't mean you're going to the, you know, to the worlds. You got you got to qualify for, it. and that's one thing I liked about USA. Yeah, and I don't think I was referencing the idea that they wouldn't have to compete against somebody. But you you mentioned that the 
event itself was in a convention center. Obviously, there's not much of a spectator component to it. Um, you know, when it comes down to like creating the whole thing, you could have created an event that qualified people into the final matches and then the final matches were on a separate day. Right. Uh, right. They, they did this in the past well, with final X. Um, I mean, like this right. year, they, they kind of did this year because like Vito and uh, one other, they sat, they didn't have to wrestle in the mini tournament. Yeah. <clears throat> like at 61, those guys wrestled to get to Vito. What, just think about if you if they plan ahead a little bit and have at a college facility. Just think if well, it would have been it would have been at Oklahoma State this year. Yeah, right. That place. Oh, yeah. Packed. Yeah. Well, I think, and maybe I'm wrong. I think they planned it for Nebraska because of Burroughs. Would be my mindset. Yeah. Yeah. It could maybe. be. Maybe I don't know. I mean, I thought that it was just coincidence that you know, hey. It's, Burroughs well, is making his run, and maybe this is his final run, and they want to have it in Lincoln. I was surprised, though, like you say, they had a convention that they didn't have it at the facility that they right. had uh, the Big Tens at, because that's not a huge facility, and I think they would have done pretty well. Yes, with, they would have. Well, that not just him, but the James Green, too. He's yeah, yeah, exactly. Here. Right. Yeah. But going back to what you're saying, you know, if you hold a Oklahoma State, now you have your your head coach, you had Jordan Oliver, you had Dayton Fix. Yeah. They probably Do you think do you think Taylor's gonna wrestle? God, I think he has to, doesn't he? Uh, I do. I mean, when is the I mean one? uh so October. October okay, like fourteenth, so. I, I thought right. it was like a month That's, out. Yeah, he's gonna gonna wrestle. I mean, he looked pretty good. Like <laughs> Against Zahid, he uh, oh, sorry, he uh, he looked really good against Zahid. That was impressive. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what I mean. I think it's interesting to think whether or not um, he goes to the to the world team uh, world uh, tournament in in general. But yeah, I mean, I wonder what his motivations would be. I mean, his motivations would probably be the focus on his athletes in the preseason and, and be around for certain types of events that he'd have to be a part of. Um, obviously, you know, I know uh, his assistant coach and I think he's more than qualified to be a head, head, head coach somewhere. So it's not like he's going to be, um, you know, I don't think the team's going to lose out whether or not he's at, at practice or not. Right. And when I was at Illinois, Mark Johnson was, you know, he was doing all the, the behind the scenes uh, political stuff with the school and the the practices and, and workouts were run by all the assistants. Um, so, you know, and same with uh, Nebraska with Manning, like they're never right. really fully there. So would be curious to see whether or not he decides to go or not. I hope so. So do I. Well, you know, another thing I wanted to chat about is that expanded conversation with um, uh, this year, the season with um, potential broadcasting stuff. Nicknames, um, I mentioned it to Marty, but I'm excited about the fact that just like this, um, you know, I send you a link and you have the opportunity to jump on and now you, we're broadcasting. Um, so I'm going to reach out to a lot of local schools and programs and see if they want to um, participate in some sort of uh uh, collabor collaboration where we can start broadcasting competitions, but you, myself, and Marty, or anybody else broadcasting wise, we don't have to be in the facility to to watch and and narrate and talk about the event. Right. Um, yeah, what are your initial thoughts on that? And and from your experience, um, you know, will that be uh, difficult uh, with anybody? Yeah, I mean, what's your thoughts on that? I think it's an awesome idea. Anything, again, that we could showcase and highlight wrestling, get it out there or people can see. Uh, I don't think any coach or AD would be against it. I mean, if they are, I, I would, I, it would baffle me why you wouldn't want your team, you know, your events thrown out there. It shouldn't be. I mean, I wouldn't think there's any licensing or any, distractions to it so yeah i mean we'll see i guess uh 
Yeah, it would be fun for us because obviously everybody's busy. So not everybody gets to be yeah. able to do in <clears throat> every competition. So I'm most excited about it just for the simple fact that by the end of the year, we'll have more information on who's wrestling and, and how good they are and whether or not they're they're progressing throughout the season. And we can go back to past matchups and, and, and look at, oh, well, this person wrestled this person. I remember watching it. Um, and again, a lot of times we notice this locally in our uh, local conference, the Nick 10, but, um, you know, a lot of people don't get the opportunity to come to wrestling events until the conference, right? Uh, whether they're working, maybe they're wrestling fans or people who had wrestled in the past, but, you know, they're working, they have kids, they have other things going on that doesn't get them to get to, you know, a local dual meet. Um, but this offers the opportunity for them to kind of check in and see who's uh, wrestling for Harlem, Honolulu, or Oregon, or Byron, or whoever, and kind of like, oh, I'm going to, uh, you know, come to that conference tournament. I'm going to come to the regional tournament. I'm, I'm going to know who's wrestling, you know, uh, ahead of time. So right. I love the storytelling aspect that it can, can bring about. Well, just kind of on that point, that first year that we did it at Harlem and we sat and kind of watched the, the conference and talked, I think it was Marianne that came over and said there are some parents, I forget, not even in the state that were following along, were happy that, you know, they yeah. can follow along with the conference tournament. So I I think it'd be awesome. <clears throat> Next thing now, we've got to get a little teleprompter so we can scribble on the screen and draw <laughs> circles around things. And <laughs> Yeah, I can already do that. I You can't do that, but I can oh. do it from my... <laughs> It probably wouldn't be good for Marty either. I don't know. Yeah, I can draw a stick figure. <laughs> yeah, we should do it. We should try to think of something like that. I mean, if you think about it, for, around here, the biggest thing there is around here for wrestling is the Dvorak. Yeah. You know, I mean, as far as competition and stuff, we should really look in to see. It. I know. I think they try to broadcast it, but to see if we could broadcast the finals or even the semifinals. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, it'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to uh, reset to them. Does uh, Hananiga, Marty, do you know their schedule? Do they have anyone coming in this year? You know what? I don't know the like schedule. Like dual meet-wise? Yeah, sure have... oh, yeah. yeah, they have two duels that uh, I already messaged about that I think uh, would be great duels. One with ICC uh, Catholic. Yeah. Um, and let me look at the other one. Um, I mean, just to start with, right? They open the season always with uh, East, right? Not necessarily. Still... Oh no. Uh, the yeah, I have to look online, but their okay. their um, schedule is already posted, so uh, they have a couple good ones that I think we yeah. figure out how to get to and Any uh, yeah, at home? yeah, they're both at home. Oh, okay. Yeah. One's with uh, ICC, who made it to the state. No, no, they lost. No, the they lost to Montini. At the sectional to the Montini, but they were probably the second best uh, 2A team uh, in the state for sure. But, um, yeah, that'd I think it would be fun. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Again, anything we can do if, to If we can get, get the Nega to let us uh, broadcast, you know, it might be difficult. Yeah, kind of the, the internet work. <laughs> They, you know, they are uh, thinking ahead. They, they're hosting the, the regional this year. Kind of neat is? Yeah. I don't know if that's supposed to still be secret, but I've already been asked to, to work the track wrestling for it. So they are hosting the, the regional. When is That's the first weekend in February, isn't it? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Right around uh, there. Uh, it might be are somewhere you, warm. Where are you at, Florida, Arizona? I might be. I don't know. I think I might be in Vegas. I'm yeah. not sure. I'm no, I don't know. I'll have to look at my schedule. Yeah. I can always do it. I always, we can always do it from remote. I can carry my little iPad. That's the first week and I'll, I'll know. I'll have Marianne. Look. Okay. Moving on. It's Moving retirement. On. Sorry. <laughs> what, can, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. You know? Yeah. You're definitely supposed to uh, follow the sun and, and yes. get some, make sure you're For golfing sure. throughout the winter time. Um, yeah, anything else, uh, you guys? Got a short one today, if that's it. All uh, you no, how about Illinois football? 
Yeah, How about big it? win last night, huh? That was awesome. I mean, it's first time in what twenty years they have gone four and zero. And who did they? Uh, who did they beat? The, the, the team that's what the team west of uh, Iowa, <laughs> Nebraska. Oh, they beat Nebraska, huh? They did, yeah. wow. and they were Double dogs time. by nine points too. Yeah, yeah. So they're yeah, hopefully they turn it around. Yeah, they uh, their quarterback's pretty good, and they got some. I like that Bielema, their head coach. He's from yeah. a small school down in Illinois and went to Iowa, played football, started for him. He's got a big Hawkeye right on his calf. Did and he, not know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think he's yeah. from town or something like that. Huh. Well, you know, go ahead, McNames. I was going to say, he had a lot of success up at Wisconsin when he was there. He sure did. Then he jumped ship and went to Arkansas, and it didn't work out so yeah. good. It didn't work out. but. <laughs> well, the good thing about that is, the football program success definitely has, uh, again, we've talked about this before, but <clears throat> the the football success uh, is a large, large contributor to the brand um, success of the colleges. And as the college's brand grows, that is going to have ancillary effects to the wrestling program. So, you know, Illinois has not had too much success in football or basketball as of late, which has not, uh, you know, <clears throat> helped too much when it comes to the the overall just um i guess fandom of illinois funding. athletics yeah yeah fandom equaling funding funding equaling uh all these other programs get more eyeballs on them so the fact that their football program is doing so well that's you know i i, I again i went to illinois and i went to nebraska nebraska there is a spotlight on the sports program because of the football um, and you know, Illinois football was always pretty solid, but never really, you know, they couldn't beat the Penn States. They couldn't beat the Wisconsin. They couldn't beat the Michigan, you know, some of these, uh, big 10 programs or Nebraska. Now, um, some of these big 10 programs that were, have been established for long term. you know, again, Michigan is a great example of like their football team is, is definitely benefiting their wrestling program, just enhancing the desire for athletes to want to be there. Um, the, it builds up the the city. So when you go into the college town, it's, it's more enjoyable. It's different, unique or whatever. Um, so the fact that their football program is doing well, that's a, that's a positive thing for yeah. building the, the wrestling program. Speaking of their program, when does their uh, new facility open? Uh, well, they canceled it. So they postponed it. I don't know. It, it was a, that's a good to topic to, talk about because oh, um they postponed it yeah the athletic director announced that they're pausing um the uh, plan um because they want to see how things are kind of unfolding um with the changing of nil and stuff like that i i believe that was his reasoning um and i think one of the reasons is um I don't know if you guys noticed or saw that they they expanded the 9.9 .9 scholarships up to 30 scholarships, mm -hmm. I think. And so what that does is it changes where your funding should go, right? So before, if you spent if you spend all your money on the facility, <clears throat> well, now you don't have money to give more athletes scholarships. Well, if you could get 30 scholarships, you have an opportunity to get 30 really high level uh, athletes on your team. And um, you know, I just watched something with college football with Texas. Uh, Texas, I guess the conversation is that they're like really deep uh, at each position. Each position right. they have, you know, three, you know, five-star recruits that are capable of competing at other schools. But I would assume because of the NIL space, there's so much money that can now attract uh, people to, you know, be in that second slot, be in that third slot. Um it helps uh, get people there. So I would assume that it has something to do with, you know, you only have finite amount of money. So you, what would you, what would you guys weigh? Like, would you try to take that money and use it for, you know, scholarship opportunities to get more, you know, uh, five-star kids, or would you build the, the facility thinking that that was going to be the, the thing that attracted people? I would do the facility. <laughs> Me too. I mean, no, no offense to Illinois, but you know, when you walk in, and I know there's some aura around Huff Hall and their wrestling room, but 
when you're being recruited and you're going across and you see the facilities some of these other places have, I mean, at the end of the day, that has a little effect on decisions. It kind of shows you <clears throat> what they're willing to commit to be successful. You know, and that's not saying that Illinois is not committed to being successful, but I think I would go facility, you know, right away. And then you go after those recruits with your new facility and say, hey, come on in, check this out. Marty? I totally agree. Yeah, you got to have the bling, man. They got to, it's got to look good where they're going to work out and everything. I mean, it just is what it is. Every place is that way. It's getting more and yeah. more. So. Well, and you guys, um, like, say, if there is a finite amount of money, like, what? How do you, you know, I don't know if you you guys are aware of this, but the University of Illinois is financially more expensive than uh, I would say a handful of the out. Like, it was cheaper f for me to go to University of Nebraska out of state tuition as opposed to in-state tuition at University of Illinois. So I don't know if you know this, but it's a little bit more. Uh, expensive. So don't you think that that is like a, a huge uh, leverage point where obviously the, if you only have so much money, how do you determine, you know, let, let's pay the recruits to come, win, get more donors, and then go build more facilities. So what's a program going to do in division one, if they have 30 scholarships and all of a sudden one of the, like, let's say a Mac school goes, we don't have enough money to have 30 scholarship. <laughs> What's going to happen there then? They're not going to have 30 scholarships or they're going to have to get. I think they're not going to have 30 scholarships. I think they have to, fund, you know, like it's kind of like, you know, Stanford not too long ago didn't have all 9.9 .9 scholarships. Um, a couple other programs are not full. You know, they were not full uh, scholarship programs. Speaking of Stanford, they're in the ACC now. <laughs> They played. They played uh, uh, Syracuse last night in football, but I mean yeah. for wrestling, it's going to be great for them. Yeah, it's yeah they make a, good a long weekend trip. Yeah, yeah, they'll they'll wrestle twice, you know, and they'll come in on maybe Wednesday or Thursday. I think they travel. I think in the Big Ten, they have to be there a day early in case of weather, so they can still run the event. But yeah, I mean, they come in on a Wednesday and they leave <laughs> Sunday night after they're done wrestling. Right. They don't have to go to class. They got tutors and everything. Yeah, Sorry, I mean, class. They, should, they should go to class, but I mean, <laughs> we were talking about that the other day. Just the craziness of the reshuffling of all these conferences and schools that are. I mean, Miami's in the ACC, correct? So you have Stanford all the way up top corner, yep. going all the way down. I mean, it, so now you you know go back to what you're saying was funding and everything. You, you are put in a bill to send your football staff across country, you know, not on a bus, on not a on a bus, <laughs> you know? And so then you're going to have to do the same with basketball. Yeah. Right. And then you go down to wrestling. I mean, all the sports, then the amount of money they're going to spend on travel costs, because it's not just getting there. Now you got to have a place to stay food i mean that's to me that's the scariness of some of them i guess you would say uh i don't want to say minor sports but not your revenue producing sports where they could see right you said what if you can't afford 30 scholarships hey we're going to have to actually pull 15 scholarships from each one of you because we got to cover some costs here yeah well, you know, the smaller programs or the smaller schools and the smaller conferences are 100% going to, um, I guess, lose in some capacity in the in the financial game. But overall, the college sports is is enormous, you know, yeah. it is a you know billion dollar industry. I can't imagine what the gambling that's happening on it is. Um, you know, the, the college sports in the top 30 schools, those top 30 brands across the uh, country, those universities are not worried about how much food is going to cost on right. their trip. Um, right. And so I think, yeah, I, I would be curious. Cause, I mean, Iowa's, you know, I, University of Iowa's supposedly 
spending half a million dollars on recruits. So I, I doubt that they're, uh, you know, short of a cash cash flow right now. Um, they're selling out season tickets every year wow. for you know, millions of dollars. So, uh, you know, certain they're programs, awesome. times are real good. You're right, right. But certain other ones, you're like, but you got, I guess, a Stanford's probably weighing all that in when they join and they get revenue sharing from whatever, the ACC network, right? Mm-hmm. So someone sent them back saying, okay, this is the, the number we probably need. Well, the wrestling program is okay. going to benefit from NIU just from that win against Notre Dame. Yeah. They're going to start yeah. selling. They're going to start selling out to them. I mean, they, they're done with their non-conference games. So now they're in the Yeah, they got to, yeah, they, they got to pull a win today. They do. You know, you can't, they, you can't have the letdown afterwards. But. Right. Let's have a quick, here, let's transition. I like that conversation. What, what do you think? What, what would it take for Northern Illinois wrestling, Northern Illinois University's NIU wrestling to beat Iowa? Is it ever, is that possible? A hell of a lot of recruits. <laughs> From Illinois. Yeah. I, you know, I mean. Find a way yeah. to keep those, get those kids too. Because they got a. But could that happen? Could that happen currently, right? NIU football didn't like, they're doing NIU football the way that, and that you do. Right, there's nothing yeah. new, nothing special about it, no. and they beat Notre Dame. Could and, and is is I, I guess I'm probably making a mistake. What is comparable to Notre Dame in wrestling? Who's who is Notre Dame in wrestling? Is it NC State? Uh, probably no, a little bit more. Yeah, probably. I would say. I mean, Nor- Notre Dame is so self financially they don't they don't ever want to join a conference because no 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 no. What I'm saying is talent wise. To compare Notre Dame to Iowa wrestling is probably not I, I, accurate. Actually, it's probably a pretty good comparison, really. Right you now, think? you know, yeah, because they're not like Penn but State. Notre, would be your... Notre Dame isn't the top, isn't a top five program in the country. It was. No, no, they, they, <laughs> no, they were not. The, if you take all the football programs, they are. They not. were ranked fifth in the country, I think, when they got beat. But they those were are lies. Those are lies. <laughs> We all know that those are lies. I don't even follow college football. Hey, and I know that they're not put, the fifth best. Hey, if we want to do stuff at Hananiga, you got to watch what you say about Notre Dame. That's uh, Walter's pride and joy right there. But, Notre Dame is? Oh, my God. My oh, life. yeah. He's a diehard. But so, yeah. so you know, if you gave it, like, again, I just don't think that I'm doing a good. Okay. Yeah. So. Let me tell you. Can I tell you a story first about Notre Dame? Is, is Illinois? Right Illinois. What about Illinois. No, let oh, me I tell think. you the story about Notre Dame. Okay. This is a uh, great story. So when I was a kid, my mom was a diehard Notre Dame fan. My dad was not. No one and no part. And they made a bet. I think it was Notre Dame playing Texas. And if Notre Dame won, my dad had to go out and buy a color TV because we didn't have color TV. <laughs> it was black and white. And Notre Dame won, and we kept that TV forever. Even when it was done old too old, my mom had it sitting in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> so, for Brian, Brian. Brian. Thank God Notre Dame won because we got a colored TV. Yeah. But no cable. We still had rabbit ears. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have Joe holding the little antenna up? Every yeah, minute? I had made him go up on the roof. He was kind of like. Lean to the right, Joe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, uh, that was. Well, here. Do you think NIU right now could be Illinois in a duel? Not this I year. I don't think so. No. Well, okay. How about Northwestern? Well, well, here's my thing. Who do we think? Who's is Illinois the top school or Northwestern? Uh, in a oh, dual meet, are. in a dual meet, Illinois is. I think. Okay. I think that was proven last year. Just. Uh, did they wrestle? Them? I don't. Yeah, but you know what? They didn't wrestle a full team, and it wasn't they, they had to reschedule because Northwestern had a a bunch of kids sick, and then they canceled and stuff like that. So, plus, well, yeah, um, yeah, or Illinois uh, redshirted a bunch of guys last year. They're all coming back. Yeah, should be. I think they're going to be halfway decent. I yeah, hope I think so. so too. Yeah, I mean it's a tough conference. So even halfway decent will, in the eyes of many, look like uh, they're still not good enough. But um, Big well, Ten's okay. like Western. That's, that's right. How do how do we keep just in the breath? We've talked about how do you keep the Illinois talent in Illinois? Well, I disagree. What, what with has you to guys. be done? I just said, don't spend your money on uh, facilities and give it straight. Re- put it in their pocket. Re- redo the wrestling room a little bit. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, exactly. They definitely Give them need... a facility to look at. Have well, you been down to Champagne? I have not. At all, ever? Yeah, stay have, have you ever looked what grows around there? What grows around there? Corn, well, yeah. soybeans. There are some rich farmers down there that mm-hmm. would be more happy to give some money to keep some guys in at Illinois. You get some of those alumni. There's crazy amounts of alumni that want to do that. Well, maybe you should uh, send uh, Poeta an email saying that you'll take over um, fundraising efforts. That it's might fun. interfere with my travels. <laughs> <laughs> right, after, right after I get done with this, we're taking off. Yeah. Where are you well, off to? Dubuque, Iowa. Oh. Hang out with a bunch of people, watch the Iowa game tonight. I mean, you would think like a guy like Reynolds could be throwing money around, right? Well, yeah. I don't know how much they have to be thrown around. I mean, you're talking – again, I'm curious about, uh, you know, who's the um, who's the Iowa donor who is – is footing the bill for the the wrestling room. I think there's a couple couple of people, couple of families. Yeah, that, that... One family in particular is getting their name on it, um, and then there's a couple other. You know, uh, Iowa has the lug- the luxury right now. They have a few individuals that are alumni that are multi 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 millionaires, and um, I just don't know if Illinois has that network of fundraisers i know they have a couple who have have promised the the funding for um the facility uh but outside of that i don't think that they have a deep roster when it comes to you know fundraising so i would be curious how they they think that they're going to get you know get the money that that iowa has or michigan has um to compete at the at the nil game you got to find somebody in your. Pro- you got to get somebody in your program to start doing that. Then you got to. You got to have a person who's in charge of creating money and getting things. Right. Well, yeah, and I think yeah. what you're bringing up is an interesting concept because, you know, I think there are a lot of programs out there that aren't thinking like that. They're still thinking about it in a wrestling standpoint, as opposed to this new business marketing standpoint of like oh we don't necessarily need the best be the best at coaching wrestling we need to be the best at leveraging our network yeah to market our program and then ultimately fundraise to point to give the best wrestlers an opportunity to be on their team um, well a hundred percent because i think oklahoma state did the best thing they could have hiring yeah. david taylor marketing oh, i mean plus he's a good wrestler and but and no offense to Coleman Scott, but if you put Coleman Scott's name and you put David Taylor, I mean, people are gravitating towards David Taylor, correct? Yeah. So, 100%. I mean, like you said, your head coach isn't always in the room running practices, whatever. There's at that level, they are. They're out there soliciting businesses. Mm-hmm. They are kissing baby, shaking hands, you know. <laughs> so you got you got to have that kind of a person galvanizing and get a name that people want to be drawn to yeah yeah i'll be curious i think uh, i i would love to have the the you know an opportunity to listen to the conversations that these college coaches are having um the fact that i know some of these college coaches i know that they're they're wrestlers and you know sometimes you got to get out of wrestling to kind of like broaden your your brain and your thought processes and uh i wonder how many of them are still just thinking wrestling 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 and not thinking hey we need to go look at this thing completely different and um look at it as a fundraising uh tool not necessarily a wrestling program um because yeah i mean going back to how do you keep illinois kids in um i think at the end of the day money is a great motivator And uh, if you can start providing these individuals with the opportunity to, you know, um, start growing. I mean, again, Real Woods bought a house as a senior in college. Okay. And, and this is, this is, if, if you can start bringing kids Where, where college, did he buy it at? Iowa or Illinois? He bought it in Iowa. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is if you can give uh, an, a student athlete the opportunity to buy a house as a college uh, student – I mean, that's pretty impressive. Um, and, and you know, I just think that, that that's where you got to go. So hopefully they're doing it. Um, anything yeah. else, guys? You want to finish up and get out of here? I'm going to 
I'll do the, uh, I'll talk to the Oregon high school coach on my, by myself, but um, any questions or any thoughts to finish? No. Awesome. No. Nope. Well, nope. good day. Yeah. Have a great week.